I would now like to call upon Dr. Leila Benzekri, who is going to talk to us about predictive factors of thyroid disease in vitiligo in Morocco. Welcome, Leila. She is well known to all of us. She takes part fully in all the vitiligo structures around us. Thank you. Your timer is at this end. Thank you. Thank uh, Dr. David Prasad uh, for invite, uh, inviting me to the VIS. And it's really a pleasure to be on live with you. As you know, uh, vitiligo is a common disease with uh, an incidence of 0.5 to 2 percent of the population. Vitiligo is associated with different autoimmune diseases, especially autoimmune thyroid diseases. And the incidence of all thyroid diseases is vitiligo varies from 1.3 percent to 30 percent with a large disparity of data according to countries. The purpose of our study was to, uh, were to identify the incidence of thyroid diseases in Morocco patients with vitiligo, to define the possible triggering factors and to assess the risk of the thyroid, thyroid disease onset in vitiligo patients. In this cross-sectional prospective study, all participants underwent a complete physical examination, a fasting blood sample analyzing ultra-sensitive thyroid stimulating hormone and TPO and thyroglobulin antibodies, and we, uh, we uh, did also a thyroid ultrasonography. Any dysthyroidism clinical sign or any abnormal assessments leads to endocrinologist consultation. For the results, uh, we include uh, 253 patients with a median age of 35.8. The, the median age of onset of vitiligo was 27 years and the sex ratio was 0 0.55. Family vitiligo was found in 27%, uh, and we have non-segmental vitiligo in 99%. Associated diseases was found in 57% of vitiligo, associated autoimmune diseases in 43.9% and associated non-autoimmune diseases in 13%. Atopy in 75%. The frequency of associated thyroid diseases for associated autoimmune thyroid diseases, thyroiditis, was found uh, in 26% hypothyroidism in 6.7% and hyperthyroidism in 6%. Uh, for associated non-autoimmune thyroid diseases, goiter in 3.2%, nodula in 2.4%, multi heteronodular goiter in 1.2% and one case of papillar, papillary carcinoma. Uh, the, the most frequent associated autoimmune diseases other that, than AITD was alopecia areata in 6.7%. Uh, IITD were associated in univariated analysis with onset of vitiligo after 12 years old and the absence of atopy Whereas with multivariate analysis, we found that 
IITD was were associated with fem female sex, uh, the onset of vitiligo after 12 years old, and facial localization. The association with different diseases uh, with vitiligo is well known, especially autoimmune thyroid diseases. Why uh, we have this association? Because there are common histological findings. Uh, there, there is an impairment of epithelium. Uh, for skin, it's a pro protective epithelium. And for thyroid, it's glandular epithelium. We have a down expression of ecadrine and collagen 4. We have also cell detachment. And we have activation of immune response. Uh, before cell destruction by CD8 lymphocytes. We found different meta-analyses uh, concerning vitiligo and IATD. The highest preval preval prevalence uh, were with subclinical hypothyroidism and the lowest with subclinical hyperthyroidism or graft disease. Many studies find hypothyroidism to be the most common, but the last meta-analysis showed that autoimmune thyroiditis was the most frequent one. This risk seems to be more important in female, increase with age and with general light vitiligo. We do not find this, this for non-segmental vitiligo. It also increases with vitiligo duration and larger body surface area involvement. And uh, in 20, uh, uh, Khalid Azdin showed that personal history of thyroid disease and acrofacial type were associated with post-tubercular onset, whereas atopic dermatitis were independently associated with pre-pubertal onset. We have really near uh, the, the same results uh, as in univariated analysis, AITD were associated with post-pubertal onset and the absence of atopy, and in multivariated, uh, it were, they were associated with female post-pubertal onset and facial localization. We do not have found any associated with acro lesions. The limitations are that both vitiligo and uh, IITD or, uh, has had unknown etiology it's a monocentric study and the follow-up was less than two years. In conclusion, the risk of thyroid dysfunction in vitiligo patients is real. Genetic factor and the intake and habit may explain the disparity between different countries. Screening vitiligo patients for thyroid disorders is mandatory, especially in female, post-pubertal onset vitiligo and facial localization to detect potential thyroid diseases and to assess the risk of future onset. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Leila, and for sticking to your time. So, we'll have one question from the audience in the interest of time so we can get on with the others. Any questions? One question at the back, please go ahead. Leila, while they're taking that there, are you doing a thyroid function test routinely on all your patients? Or are you restricting it to this group that you found to be associated with it? No, no, no. Uh, we, do, uh, we do routinely uh, uh, a fast blood sample for glycemia, uh, um, NFS, okay. and uh, thyroid function, and vitamin D also. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, sir it, uh, this is not a question. This is my observation. Uh, compared to non-thyroid, Thyroid patients are more resistant to treatment. So, with uh, examer or NBUB treatment, anything, what I observed, this, those having thyroid problem, thyroid uh, disease, they are getting very poor response. So, please, anybody can suggest anything. Thank you, no, Thank you sir. No, really, I do not find any... Uh, 
between the outcome of uh, vitiligo alone and vitiligo associated with thyroid disease. It seems that uh, the, the outcome uh, is completely uh, independent uh, from the disease, from the associated disease. Thank you. Thank you very much.